Welcome to Living a Sustainable Dream. Today, we're going to be working on the tractor and we're going to be changing the alternator and fan belt. Come join me. One thing I'd like to point out is the tight quarters of a Coyote tractor. This is the belt that I'm going to uh, change and put on, but to be honest, this is the new belt and I kind of put it on to see if it would work and I'm going to take it back off, show you how to take it off and then put it back on and we'll also talk a little bit about the type of belt that I have. Not much work area here at all. Not even much work area to get this bolt here loose. This is the bolt you need to loosen to push the alternator forward to loosen the belt tension off the alternator pulley and you pull that belt right off just like that, freeze the belt, and then you have to work it in that tight space there around the fan. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this tight space. One thing I really do like is this, this light right here. I got this for, I believe it was my birthday from my son, but what a great light. It has a magnet on the end there. I just plunk it right there, and you can just shine it down where you are working. I'm gonna pull it off of the pulley for the fan, see right there. Now it is free from the alternator pulley and the fan pulley. Now, I believe you got off the drive shaft down there. Okay, just pulls right out and there it's free. Now what you have to do, this is where it gets a little bit of a pain. Right here, see that little gap is you have to fish the belt between this fan shroud and the fan inside. All right, so let's talk about the tight quarters here. This is the, the fan shroud right here. And um, they have worked the fan shroud to be an integral part of the system here. Uh, to get the fan shroud off, I mean, you got a hose here has to be undone. Top hose right here has to be undone. You have electronics right here that is connected to the fan shroud. You got a top hose right here that's also connected to the fan shroud. You have these hoses here going through the fan shroud is the overflow for the radiator. This has to come off. It's hooked tightly close to the fan shroud, so you just pull that up so you can get the fan shroud off. You got another hose or spigot here, drain valve for the radiator. That's a lot of work to get that fan shroud off. So that's why I chose to fish the uh, belt between the fan shroud and the fan. Not real easy to work with at all. You got to make do with what you got and uh, hope you can kind of, you know, sneak the belt around things so that you uh, don't have to take it to the shop for something so simple that an older tractor would have taken a few minutes. So what I do is I turn the fan and as you turn it, and then you rotate the fan and right at the top, there just seems to be a little bit more gap and then you rotate the fan, just getting a little bit more of the belt on the other side of the fan. See that? See how it's it's coming over like that? So you just kind of keep rotating. See soon. I'm just pulling it through now. Look, boom. Just like magic. Belt's off. Look at that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about belts and types of belts real quick. I'm not an expert on this. I've been doing internet research this morning to kind of figure out what I'm doing and if I should do it or not. This is known as a cog belt. And for my model of the CK3510, this is what was on there. And if you look, we can see that inside these cogs, there is cracks 
all the way through every one of those cogs. Now I think the damage to the belt that was done happened maybe post it falling off the pulleys. But what happened is you, um, this belt came off and then my tractor went into overheat uh, because the fan wasn't running. Very dangerous situation. The, the tractor geared down um, as it got in close to the red. It geared itself down. Part of all that electronics there saved the engine of the tractor, which is great. Um, so there's a, there's a positive to all that, that stuff there. But whether to go with a cog or a standard belt. Now this is the new belt I bought. And as you notice, there are no cogs in it. It's just flat. It's a flat standard V-belt. Same size, fits the tractor, great. Different model number or all that. For this CK3510, the model number for the cog is um, A43, as you can see there. And you can buy these on Amazon. I'm not sure how much I trust that, but uh, I could order this and get a new one. I went to the tractor dealership and they quoted me $18, uh, which is probably about uh, twice what I could find it online. But it, it, And if you count shipping and handling, if I just went to the dealership and picked it up, there'd be no shipping cost or whatever. This was at my local farm and feed store had this right off the wall. Uh, this one was 18. The standard was nine. Okay. Eight and change, I believe. Now, if you're into the, if you're wanting to put the exact same stuff on your tractor, um, it's possible. And I'm thinking about going ahead and ordering this, this style belt, the cog belt, and then use this one in a pinch like I am now, because I, I need this. What I found out on the research is, is that whenever your tractor goes into, let's say something causes the drive shaft to um, buckle in power, like the, the power is going and it's strong and all of a sudden you hit something and it causes a drawdown or a slip, uh, this belt does not slip as easily and can get caught up, hung up, and uh, cause problems and cracking and, and more wear on this belt. This one will slip on the pulleys which will allow it to spin, the, the engine to keep spinning. If it hits something hard or has a, uh, has a power flux, this one will just slip on the pulleys. Now, the, that's the good thing for this belt over this one. Now, the bad thing for this belt is, is that this one is rougher on the bearings of the pulleys. So it's a little bit tighter and a little bit stronger uh, hold versus this one. So it's kind of like you have to weigh what you're what you're expecting to do with these belts and what the tractor company recommends using now obviously they put this on this is the belt i had for the purchase of the tractor and this has been on the tractor since i bought it in i believe spring of 2017 16 17 and then this one obviously is the one i bought this this week couldn't get this one, found this one on the side, and I'm like, okay, we'll just go and try this and see what happens. So I was kind of worried that it wouldn't get over the fan, uh, fan shroud, so I went ahead and tested it, and you guys saw me pull this one off. This one was actually really easy to come off around the fan. This one's a little bit stiffer, harder to work with. This one, very easy to loop around that fan because it's very, very flexible with those cogs. So that's something you might want to think about. If you're having trouble getting one of these on the standards, you might want to consider this because it has more flex to it and a little bit more give as you're putting it around that fan shroud. So that's that's the belts. And if you guys want to comment below and say, hey, how dare you switch belts on your tractor? How, you know, go ahead, tell me what you guys think of belts um, or whether I'm doing the right thing or not. I'm probably going to have this as a temporary fix for now. I noticed that this belt gave out when I put the snowblower on. Once I started using the snowblower, the snowblower was hitting some pretty hard slush. And I could tell the engine was pulsing a little bit. And I was keeping it revved up to 2,500 RPMs, which is the standard that you're supposed to have the snowblower running at. And I noticed that the snow was really working the engine. And I think that's what caused this belt to fail and um, come off the pulleys. 
this belt would just slide on the pulleys in that scenario. So this would do better, I believe, with the snowblower. Once again, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments below. I've never been a tractor owner before, and I got, you know, this is my first time working on a tractor or worth a tractor. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in here and notice I'm just taking this here and I'm just sliding it into the compartment. You can see it's not connected at all. I'm slipping it down here. I'm not making it on the pulley at all. And I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work it on the fan. Okay, and I'm spinning the fan around and tucking it behind the fan blades as it turns. Okay, and then Voila is now on the other side of the fan, okay? So you don't have to go all the way around, but you just gotta get it to where you can pull it through and around that fan. Yeah. Almost like a, a puzzle. Okay, and I got, got it on the bottom pulley first. Yep. And it is now securely around all the pulleys. And now I have to pull the alternator back and pivot the alternator, which is the tensioner as well for this tractor, and get that nice and tense. For my tractor, it takes a, a 12 millimeter. I'm using one of these very awesome Craftsman box wrenches that pivots. Bought this when Sears was still in, around. And uh, I was sad to see that store go. I'm using a, this is very tight in here. I'm using a flathead against the block, flathead screwdriver to get that tension really up. And the belt is nice and tense. Not not much give at all, getting that tightened. Don't want to strip anything. So right now I think that's good to go. And we can see if it will run properly and um, make sure that there is no you know vibration in the belt. Now that, that could affect the bearings, like I said, versus the cog belt. This is a, a stiffer belt and that could affect the bearings. So be aware of that. If you're gonna go from a cog to a standard, that is one of the issues I was warned about online when I was doing the research. And uh, that's that's a decision you have to make. But this is gonna help get me through a situation that I'm in with all this slush and snow. So a lot of slush and, slush and snow has developed. And I do have a plow truck which I probably will pull out today and use. Um, as you guys know, I'm off grid, and this is also my my generator. It generates my power, and here's the generator hooked up to the PTO as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put my tool back. I've had this case. This originally came with the um, the tools. And uh, I can't wait till I get a shop built, which is going out there. If you see the basketball hoop, all that snow and those hay straw bells, that's my shop all put together, put to bed this winter. And I'll be working on that, hopefully. Here's the, the number on that V belt and also the price that I paid locally for it. So Service King, I know, also makes uh, tractor parts, or should I say tractor uh, implements. So that's the V belt number.
All right, let's go ahead and get her started. Thank you for joining me at Living a Sustainable Dream. I hope this video was very helpful uh, for you and your belt replacement on your Coyote 35 CK10 tractor. It may work for other tractors as well. I'm not sure. Um, it is very tight space working in there and it definitely was a challenge. Um, as far as the level of difficulty, I'd say probably a two. Uh, literally, I only had it undo the one bolt on the alternator to get it to um, loosen, to pull off the belt, and then just working it around the fan was just a little bit of patience, that's all. That being said, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys still love your tractors. I know I love my tractor, um, even though with all that uh, goobly gop stuff on there, it made it a lot easier knowing it did not, uh, that it protected my engine uh, from overheating uh, when it came down to it, when that belt failed. All right, good luck you guys. Uh, don't forget to comment below and let me know what you guys think of the cog belt versus the standard V belt. Mm -hmm.